problems. Okay, so here we are, and let's start by explaining three fundamental concepts in electronics. Voltage, current, and resistance. Here we have what's called a series circuit with a battery, an LED, and a resistor. As long as the battery isn't dead, the LED lights up. Now, the battery provides a voltage or the electrical pressure. This pressure pushes current, which is simply moving electrons through the wire, resistor, and LED, causing it to light. The resistor limits this flow of current. If we left it out of the circuit, the LED would burn bright for a few seconds and then burn out due to excess current. Which brings us to the first takeaway. Circuits usually need some way to limit the amount of current or bad things can happen. As we've seen, electronic components can be destroyed by excessive current. And since current flow generates heat, it can also be a fire hazard. If you're still confused about what all these terms mean, let's go to an analogy we're all familiar with, running water. This circuit is kind of like a water pump with a valve attached to it. With our water analogy, the pump produces the pressure needed to push the water through the pipe. We can think of this pump as a battery in our actual circuit, as they both produce a pressure. One is electrical pressure, and the other being fluid pressure. Next, we see the valve. The valve is like a variable resistor. When it's almost all the way closed, very little water would flow. With the valve open all the way, maximum water will flow. So the valve is analogous to the resistor in our circuit. Finally, we have the water itself. The water coming out of the faucet flowing through the pipe is like the current flowing through the circuit. Just as a current, the electrical circuit does work by lighting the LED, the water can do work if, say, we set up a water wheel at the end of the faucet. Notice that, like current, excessive water flow can be dangerous. If we allow too much water to flow at once, the pipes may burst or the faucet may be damaged. Just like excessive current can fry the LED and make the wires hot, therefore burning them up. So now we know that voltage pushes current through a circuit to do useful work. The higher the voltage, the higher the pressure. And this means that current and voltage are proportional. If we increase the pressure in our water example, say by getting a bigger pump, more water would be forced through the pipe and it would come out of the faucet at a higher speed and pressure. One more important point to know is that when we measure the voltage, or someone says something like the voltage at point A is 5 volts, is that we're measuring voltage with respect to something. For example, when measuring voltage across a resistor, we're just measuring the voltage from point A with respect to point B, or one end of the resistor with the other. Often, you'll measure voltage with respect to ground, which is the lowest voltage in a circuit, usually zero volts. So, for example, if I wanted to measure the voltage at point A in this circuit, I put one end of my meter at point A, and the other at ground, since I'm measuring the voltage at A with respect to ground. Earlier, I mentioned that our LED circuit was a series circuit. But what does that mean? In a series circuit, current only has one path to flow through. Looking back at our circuit, if we remove the resistor, or maybe it burns open, current ceases to flow because it's no longer a complete circuit. Note that the battery voltage still appears where the resistor was, but current cannot flow in an open circuit, so the LED does not light. Also, it's interesting to know that the same amount of current flows through the whole circuit, assuming it's not open. So, since the current only has one path to follow, the same current that flows through the resistor will also flow through the LED. However, the voltage drop across each component is usually going to be different, unless we have a string of resistors with the same value. In fact, the sum of all the individual voltage drops equals the source voltage, or the battery voltage, and this is known as Kirchhoff's Voltage Law, or KVL for short. One of the weaknesses of a series circuit is that if one element breaks or maybe a wire gets loose, the circuit no longer works. The solution to this is called a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, the current has more than one path to follow. So, if one of the resistors in this simple parallel circuit blows open, current still flows through the other resistors. This is how your house is wired. If it weren't and a light bulb burnt out, the rest of the bulbs in that circuit would also go out. And anyone who's used cheap Christmas lights before is familiar with this debacle. Also, in a parallel circuit, the voltage across all legs of the circuit is the same. It's the current that gets divided up and flows through the various elements. The amount of current through each element depends on the resistance of that element. The higher the resistance, the less current flows through it. All individual branch currents sum up to the source current. And again, Mr. Kirchhoff makes another appearance, and this is referred to as Kirchhoff's current law, 
or KCL. Finally, we have the series parallel circuit, which is a combination of both. Most useful circuits you'll work with will be of this type. However, the same concepts we already discussed apply. Voltage stays the same in parts of the circuit that are parallel to each other, and the same current flows through the parts that are in series. So we now have some basic knowledge of voltage, current, resistance, and the three types of circuits. But what does AC or DC mean, and what's the difference? DC stands for direct current. Direct current flows in one direction only. AC stands for alternating current, which changes direction periodically. Still confused? Well, if we were to plot the voltage of an ideal battery, which is a DC source versus time, we'd have a flat line. Here we have a positive DC voltage in the picture on the left, and a negative DC voltage in the picture on the right. It's not very interesting to look at, but most of your projects will use DC. Note that while the vertical axis in this picture is labeled voltage, it could just as easily be current. The graphs would look the same, just a flat line. Alternating current, or AC, is electric current first in one direction for a period of time, and then in the reverse direction for a period of time. Now most of us are familiar with the AC power supplied to our homes, and many of our appliances run on AC. The power at the receptacle in your home comes out in the form of what's called a sine wave. Sine is short for sinusoidal. This figure here depicts a typical sine wave you'd find at the receptacle in your home. Notice that it switches back and forth from positive to negative continuously. This is where AC gets its name from. It continuously alternates. Physically, this means that at one instant, electrons are moving in one direction. Then they switch and move the opposite direction at the next instant. This flip-flopping keeps going on and on. One important thing to note is that the AC power in your home is dangerous and can kill you. If you decide to do any sort of project or experiment involving AC, please be safe. If you're not sure what you're doing, don't do it. Let's quickly go over some common electronic components you'll see when working with Arduino. We already know that a resistor limits the flow of current. They can also be used to drop voltage. In fact, a simple voltage divider can be made with two resistors. Another common component you'll run into is a capacitor. A capacitor stores electric energy in an electric field between its two plates. The bigger the cap, the more energy it can store. Inductors also store energy, but they store it in a magnetic field rather than an electric field. An inductor is simply a coil of wire, sometimes wound around some type of core. Though not as common as capacitors, you may run into them. You will use transformers to step AC voltages up or down if you work with projects involving any type of AC voltage. Diodes allow current to flow in only one direction. A special type of diode, and one you often find yourself using, is the LED, which stands for Light Emitting Diode. These are usually used as indicators, for example, if a gadget is on the LED lights, when it's off, it's dark. Transistors are another common component. They're used as solid state switches or used to amplify signals. If you want to drive a motor with the Arduino, you'll need transistors as the board itself cannot supply enough power to turn most motors. Finally, we have the integrated circuit, or IC. ICs can perform a myriad of functions depending on the IC and what it was designed for. They usually come as black plastic rectangles or squares with pins sticking out of them. In fact, the brains of the Arduino Uno, the ATmega328P, is an IC, and there are others on the board also. Whew, that's a lot of information. Like I said before, this was not meant to be a complete course on basic electronics. If you're still confused or unsure, don't worry. Soon enough, you'll know about all these components and the basic concepts behind electronics.